So our final section in this lecture will go into timing optimization. So how can we optimize timing? There are actually many, many transforms that the synthesizer can apply to the logic to improve the cost function. Resizing the cells, buffering or cloning to reduce load on critical nets, decomposing large cells, swapping connections on community pins, moving critical signals forward, adding early paths, recovering area. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of different heuristics that the synthesizer applies. Let's take a simple example. So we, uh, after doing all kinds of synthesis and technology mapping and so forth, we arrive at this uh, type of a uh, net list and we see here that these two um, inverters are uh, in line and they actually aren't doing anything. They're just buffering a signal so we can remove them possibly and uh, maybe save some time because the delay here had these two gate delays where the delay here doesn't have any. That's just a really simple, maybe trivial example and it may not be correct depending on the load and so forth. But let's see a few of these heuristics that are actually useful and optimized. So we'll start with resizing, cloning, and buffering. Resizing, it's also one of these basic st straightforward things. We have this NAND gate, and we have a lib file of the NAND gate that describes how it works. And we have three different NAND gates. We have a red one called A, uh, size A, a yellow one size B, and a green one size C. And uh, what we can see here is that we have uh, output loads that uh, equal to 7, 0.7. So if we go down to 0.7, we can see that the green one will have about uh, 0.25 or so, uh, and the red one will have about an 0.35 um, delay. So obviously, with, with such a load, what we should do is we should take the green cell, the C cell, and we'll get a better um, delay. So just by resizing and changing the size of uh, a certain driver, we can get better timing. That's uh, pretty straightforward, but we can also do things such as cloning. So we can take the same... Uh, type of situation. We have uh, our NAND gate here. We have uh, our load, which is quite large. What we can do is we can just make another copy of our NAND gate um, and have each one drive part of the load. That's called cloning. And you'll see in your synthesis tool that it says such and such a gate was cloned. Um, obviously, we can also buffer the fan out net. So doing the same, instead of actually cloning and making another copy of the NAND gate, we can have our, depending also on where uh, the things are placed in the end, we can have um, some of these uh, capacitances sitting off of the same net and some of them going through a buffer which can strengthen the signal and better drive the rest. So basically this NAND gate is now driving 0.5 versus this one is driving 0.6 and maybe that gets us a better balance. So those are the basic uh, three ways of doing um, logic optimization or timing optimization, but there are many more. So for example, we can redesign the fan in and fan out trees. So let's see what redesigning the fan in tree is here. We, uh, our timer sees that uh, these four signals arrived at different times. This one took the longest. It took four whatevers to arrive, and this one uh, arrived immediately at time zero. Um, and if we look at this, our worst case path is through here. So uh, we went through A, right, and it took us uh, exactly six uh, we, we arrived at E after 6. Well, looking at that, we can just redesign our fan in and improve this. So we took C and D, which arrived at 0 and 1. And for example, C, which is the worst case of that, it went through these three. And it arrived after 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's fine. But looking at A, which came at, at time 4, it just went through 1. So the arrival time at E is eventually 5. So we were able to reduce our, our worst case arrival time from six to five just by redesigning the fan entry without uh, changing any of the logic. Redesigning the fan out tree is a similar type of a thing. So if we look at here, our longest path is from our AND gate through this inverter, through this uh, four input AND gate, which has a large delay, and that took us five time units. Well, we can redesign the fan out tree in this way. We can take our um, uh, AND gate and directly connect it to this AND gate so our arrival time through this path will now be 4. Um, on the other hand, we can stick some sort of a buffer that it, it, it separates our load over to here. We can make it even a bigger buffer and then it drives these guys. If this buffer had uh, a delay now of 2 because it has a larger fan out, then this takes 1, 2, and 3. Um, uh, so we get an, another arrival time at 4, and we balance these two to be 4 instead of being 5 as we had before. So that's another way of restructuring the fan out to uh, achieve better uh, timing 
Of course, we didn't change the logic here. Another way to do things is to decompose and swap. So obviously, and we've learned about this before, we can decompose complex gates into less complex ones. So we have this six input and or gate, and uh, we can decompose it in several different ways. We can turn it into two input NANDs with a three input NAND on the output, or we can do uh, make it entirely with two input NANDs. And depending on what we want to drive, uh, we can arrive at the best uh, logical effort or whatever to uh, do this in the best way. Uh, another thing is we can swap commutative pins. So this is a simple sorting type of thing, and it's based on the fact that uh, not all uh, pin delays are the same and not all paths through the logic are exactly the same. So again, we have these arrival times. So this signal arrived at time zero and this signal arrived at time two. And our worst path is obviously from the one that arrived at two. It went through this really bad two delay um, gate so it arrives over here at four and another one we arrived in the end at time five we can just swip swap uh, uh, pin number c and number a so we just did a kind of a shifting over there and now the worst the, the the latest path arrives at number c goes through another one and it took three time units um, our fastest uh, delay was at a which took zero so now it went through two and another one and it also arrived at three and we reduced our timing from five to three just by swapping which input and these are all commutative they do exactly the same logic so it didn't matter to us so that's another type of timing optimization we can do um, the most complex type of timing optimization it's often uh, something that uh, designers are very scared of doing in fact um, is to uh, do what's called retiming um, Retiming is uh, something a bit more complex um, if we're given the following network. So we have some sort of a pipe with registers. Um, you see that uh, this is 6 plus 4 plus 2. That takes 12 um, time units to go between flip-flops versus this timing path has 4 and 4. It takes 8 time units to go through. And we want to arrive at a cycle time of 10, but that's impossible because this took 12 time units uh, to go through. So what could we do? Well, in certain cases, the synthesizer can go over this logic and it can just move, for example, this buffer over to that side. And you see that what we get is 10 over here and 10 over here. And then our worst case timing path between all flip flops is 10. Um, the, diff the problem is that now this logic cloud is different than this logic cloud. And this logic cloud is different than this logic cloud, which makes things such as logic uh, as uh, equivalence checking very tough and non-trivial. And therefore, sometimes uh, this is stayed away from. But it's a very strong type of a uh, of a tool that you can use to balance clock uh, uh, to balance uh, different timing paths and reach a uh, higher throughput in the end. So that's um, the end of our two lectures about logic synthesis. Um, a lot of all the algorithmic stuff basically was taken from uh, uh, from Rob Rutenbar's wonderful Coursera course. I took some stuff from IDESA, which shows uh, has a great set of courses to learn how to do things. Um, of course, John Rabai's uh, low power design essentials and other types of things that um, I, uh, I was able to find around the Internet. Thank you.